Hello guys. Now we already know the disadvantage of static net and the dynamic net, right? And uh, in the real network, we usually will use a third type of the net, overload net. And what means overload, overload net? Overload net also will translate the IP address information, but except this one, we will add the port information. So that's why if we use this technology, we can enable multiple private address to be mapped to one public address. And we can use different port number to distinguish them. An overload net can be configured with the address pool, or maybe you can directly use the IP address of external network interface, because maybe in lots of scenarios, the external network interface will use a public IP address. And then you can use more than 65,000 ports to distinguish different private IP addresses. So if you use this technology, we can solve the problem that the public IP address is not enough. And if the IP address of external interface is used directly, multiple private terminals we can directly access the external network use a different port number from the same external network address and uh, like this topology if we only have one public ip address this is the ip address of the outer interface 100 or 100 and now PC1 and the PC2, both of them want to deactivate the destination 200-101 and use the overload net technology. And about row 1, we will use different port number to distinguish the terminals. So, on the Regi RGOS platform, the dynamic net is enabled with overload function by default. So, you only need to add the command, it's enough. And then let's see the process, how to do the translation if we use the overload net. So following topology, we want to let PC1 and PC2, both of them can wait to the destination PC4 at the same time. So the first step, if PC1 to wait to the destination, from PC1, the message to route 1, we have to encapsulate the information, right? The source IP and the destination IP and also the port information. But pay attention, if you use a static net and a dynamic net, we also will encapsulate the port number information. But about these two technologies, we will not translate the port information. That's why on this example, we will add the port information in the overload net, overload net technology because this information will be translated. But about this uh, dynamic and static net, they don't change the port information. That's why we ignore the port, but we still will encapsulate the port information. So pay attention about this one. And later, when round one receives this message, because we already directly to use the interface IP address as a public IP address, so we will translate the source IP address information to become 100.1.1.100. And we will use a port number 3000 to translate the port information of PC1 2000. And later, this message will be sent out. And then when PC4 give a reply, this message will be sent to the row 1, and the row 1 will translate the destination IP address information again according to the net entries. Then the message finally will be sent to the PC1 again. So this is the process. If PC1 want to wait to the destination of PC4, and at the same time, if PC2 also want to wait to the destination of PC4, then let's say the process. Also, PC2 will do the encapsulation. The so source IP address is 192.168.1.2 and the port number is 2000. 
So destination IP address is 200.1.1.1 and the port number is 2. Maybe the PC4 need to use different port number information to make a different connection with different terminals. And then this message will be sent to round 1. And round 1 also will use the same public IP address to translate the private IP address. But we will use the special port number to indicate the private information, like 3001. And later, this message will be continuously sent to the destination PC4, and then PC4 will give a reply. And when round 1 receives this message according to the net entry, we will do the translation again, and then the message finally will be sent to PC2. So you will find at this process, we can use one public IP address, it's enough. Then we will use different port number to distinguish different terminals. And then let's see the configuration. Overload net has basically the same configuration as a dynamic net. The different one is you have to add the overload as a key word. And also you have to give the ACL, right? Select the private address at first, then you have to create the pool, or maybe you can direct it to use the outer interface. Then the key configuration of IP net is same with dynamic, but the different one, it's the last, you have to add the overload. And here is the full configuration. And you have to create the interface to become inside or outside. And then create the access list, access list 10, and allow the segment of 192.160.1.0. And you also can direct it to use the outer interface as a public address. IP net inside source list 10 interface gigabit 02 and add the keyword overload. So if now we only have one public IP address of the gigabit 02, but we will use different port number to distinguish different uh, private IP address. And later you can use the port, the tool, ping to finish the test. On PC1, you can ping the destination, 200.1.1.1. On PC2, you also can ping the destination. And then you also can use the command show IP net translation. And you will find for different inside local. One is 192.168.1.200. And another one for the 192.168.1.1 and 1.2. We use different port number to distinguish them about these two values, right? So that's why in the real network, lots of scenarios we will use the overload net. And we can use less public address and to provide multiple service for the private network. And if you have lots of terminals, maybe you arrange two public IP address, it's enough for them. So about the static or maybe dynamic or maybe overload net, Three types solve the problem how to let the private terminal to wait the external network, right? But we still have the other scenario, the service port mapping. We see the dynamic net and the overload net are suitable for a big number of the internet user want to access the external network. But in some scenario, we also need to visit the private network. For example, now I'm on the business in other city, but I want to connect uh, our company and to download some files or maybe download some documents. In this scenario, we hope that the company ser server also can provide the service for the public network. Someone maybe says the solution is use VPN. VPN also is a solution. And the special one, for example, you deploy the HTTP server and uh, to provide the company's website page. And some public user also want to visit. And maybe you deploy the FTP server and then 
the public user can log in to download some documents and uh, something like the telnet and OA server, and they will use different port number to provide different service. So in this scenario, if you use a static net, can map the inter service one to one to the external network, but it is a waste, right? Because about the static way, you only can translate the IP address information. So in this scenario, if you want also save the uh, solve the problem to use less public IP address, but can provide multiple service, you have to use a port mapping. In the port mapping, not only translate the IP address, but we also can translate the port information. And we can use one public IP address and a different port number to indicate, to provide different service. So this is the scenario why we want to use a port mapping. And uh, here is an example for the row one. We can use the same public IP address 100.1.100 and the different port number 80 to indicate the HTTP server, 21 to indicate the FTP server, 23 is the telnet, and the port number 8080 to indicate the OA server. Then let's see the key command here. On the row one, this is the same. If you want to uh, use net technology, you have to define which interface is inside, which interface is outside. Then you have to add the configuration, IP net inside and the source static. We use the TCP protocol as the, the transport layer protocol and what's the inside, what's the private IP address, what's the port number and what's the public address and what's the public port number. And pay attention, the private IP address must be same with your server IP address. And the port number must be same when you deploy the server and which port you want to use to provide the service by the terminal. So this port number must be same. And the later, if you use a public IP address and a public port number, the public port number means when you visit the detail server, you have to give the correct port number. So this is a relationship. So first you have to choose a protocol, which protocols will be used. And another one is the inside address of the server private IP address and the inside port number and also the external interface address and the outside port number. When you visit the server, you have to enter the external public IP address and the public port number. And later, you also can use a command to test. If PC3 want to telnet the destination, because if you use a telnet, the default port number is 23. So you can directly tell net 100, 1.1.100, and then they will ask you to add the username and password. If you give the correct password, then you can directly tell net the device successfully. And after you finish the configuration and finish the test, you have to use the command show IP net translation. Then you will find this information what's inside global and what's inside local and outside something like this. So all the information will be added on the translation entry. So that's all about the technology of the net. The configuration and the principle is easy to understand. And the key command also is less. And here is a practice question. Which of the following statements about the net are correct? Option A, option B, and option C, or option D? That's all. Hello, guys. About the net, we talk a lot of principle, right? We divide the IP address to become private IP address and public IP address. And about the private IP address, different company and different scenario, we can use the same segment. And the range we also discussed like the 10.0.0 .0 .0 and the 
0.16.0.0, something like this. And another one is we have several types of technology about the net, like the static net, like the dynamic net. Because about the static, one IP address, one public IP address only can be used for one private IP address. So, lots of terminal in the private network, maybe we will use a dynamic net technology. One public IP address can be used for several private IP address. This is the main function of the net. And we also discussed some basic configuration of the net. We have to design the pool, we have to provide the public IP address, and then to do the definition of the devices which IP address can be used for which part of private IP address. That's all about the net. In the next video, we also will discuss something about the net configuration. Thank you.